Hello and welcome to the fourth micro jam. This micro jam is going to be centered around head tilts, um, which are the Z axis head rotation. Um, I'm going to talk about the head rotation that you get from the uh, head tracker. And then I'm also going to show you some different ways you can use it. And this specific video is going to be centered on creating uh, a 2D effect using face stickers with the head rotation. Um, this is similar to our two-person head tilt quiz, um, but it's a smaller chunk that I think you can take and use in a modular way in some different types of effects. <clears throat> um, the first thing I'll point out is that the centerpiece of this, uh, this sort of, I guess the whole micro jam is just taking the head rotation that we get from the head tracker and make taking it and putting it into something that uh, works for our specific use case. Now, if you see the input rotation, this is what's coming directly from the head tracker. The value here for the Z rotation is 355 or so. And then if I slightly tilt my head, you'll see it goes down. If I tilt my head more, it jumps all the way to one. Um, and that's because the rotation is on a axis that goes from zero to 360 degrees. And that place where zero and 360 meet is when you're looking directly forward at the screen. So that can cause some problems if you wanna do some mathematical calculations where looking left should be very similar to looking right because looking right might be 350 degrees where looking left is 10 degrees as it wraps all the way around. And so what might be a little more useful in these kind of scenarios so that it doesn't flip um, from zero to 360 instantaneously is changing that range from negative 180 to 180 and to making use of the negative values. So then as it goes from one and it decreases, it slowly goes to negative one instead of 359. Um, and that smooth transition where it goes from negative 180 to 180 smoothly gives us a whole massive range of values that we can use for smooth interactions. And so that's exactly what this subgraph does. Uh, I called it safe rotations. And essentially it just takes in that value from zero to 360, and it will output a value from negative 180 to 180. Uh, just as a reminder, I explained this in my other video, but if you take a look at 340 degrees, that's going to look exactly the same as negative 20. They're the same exact value. They just are one rotation away from each other. So that's why we can use these negative values in replacement of the higher values. Now that that's out of the way, I'll show you some cool ways that you can use this. Um, we take in these values and in this graph, I'm essentially um, taking a look at how much the head is rotated so if it's rotated some negative degrees, I might say that it's tilting left. If it's tilted some positive degrees, I might say that it's tilting the other direction. Um, so in this subgraph, I'm doing these calculations where I'm saying, okay, what is the maximum that we want to be able to tilt the head? And, uh, and then we'll normalize that value. So zero to our maximum rotation is going to be normalized to a value between zero and one. So let's say that our maximum value is going to be uh, tilt threshold, which I made it so that you can change that in this subgraph. I'm gonna say 15. So when you tilt your head 15 degrees, it's going to, uh, it's going to be one. And we're gonna clamp that value, so if you go over 15, it's still gonna be one. And on the output of the subgraph, you can see the left amount and right amount. These are values. Um, when I tilt all the way right, you can see it clamps at one, and there's some values in between as I tilt back to center. Uh, now, if all you want is to make effects and you don't care how this stuff works, you can only use the outputs and you don't have to understand any of this. Uh, so what I'm doing with these events, as I call them, um, is I'm just sending a signal when a certain thing happens. And this is how you can control the logic of your game to change the question. You might notice that when I select all the way, the question changes, and then it doesn't keep changing as my head is tilting because there's only one event that triggered when I move my head this far, 
this way. So we basically just want to uh, look for this event happening and do something when it happens. You can dig in more to the subgraph to see how I created these events if you'd like. Um, it's a bit of what we call a state machine. So when I tilt left, that means I'm all the way tilted left. And we want to know when that starts. We don't care if you're doing it 10 seconds after you tilted your head. We want to know that moment that it happens. So that's when this event fires, when the tilting starts, when, when the full tilting starts. So you'll notice a little blue dot appears when an event is sent. So if I move back um, and then tilt again, you'll see the dot turns blue. I put this here, uh, this variable setter, and it gets this event when you're back to center. And so when I go back to center, you can see it turns blue for one frame, just to set that value one time. So what I'm doing here is two things. I'm driving some, um, I'm driving the color and size of these icons by uh, changing the scale and the color uh, from these values coming out of my subgraph. So as you tur turn more right, you're going to match that scale and uh, linearly interpolate to this color based on that zero to one value. So at zero, you want it to be completely white, and you want it to be at a scale of one. When you tilt it all the way here, you can see if we zoom in that we change our scale to a maximum of 1.5, and we change our color all the way to blue. Um, so that is an interesting way, and if you want to dig into these uh, other subgraphs, you can see how I use the remap uh, node to change our values from some desired inputs to some desired outputs. Here's where you can see I defined the scale from 1 to 1.5, and the color interpolation, I use 0 to 1. Um, so that's how we do the colors and scaling. And then lastly, the harder part, which um, is interesting. Every time you tilt left or right, that's why I connected both of these events, you can uh, increment a looping counter. And I included this, uh, this is my own counter that I use that does a little more complex things. Um, but you could use a normal counter as well and so, as long as you can make it loop back to the start when it gets to, when it increments over the max. So we're just going to increment from zero to two. Two is exclusive, meaning it will never be two. So when it hits two, it'll go back to zero. So really what we're doing is just going back and forth between zero and two. Um, and then we're using this select node to put in a couple textures that we can choose from and using the value of our counter to decide if we're choosing the zero texture or the one texture. So A or B or X or Y. And then we're doing that with all of the icons that we wanna change. And then we're using some texture setting nodes. So this is the question icon setting the texture and here is the right and left icon. A and, these are the A and B that change to X and Y when I increment this counter. So those are pretty much all the things you need to know about this. Um, one other thing I wanted to go over very quickly that I think is very useful to know about, especially when you're using face stickers in this way, um, I will just create a new image so I can show you. Uh, here is the default texture. Now, if you are, if you want to create a face sticker, um, then it will attach to the face points. Now, I've learned this through my own experimentation. This is nothing that I've gained from working at TikTok. Um, and I just say that because I want you to know how much you can learn just from experimenting with the tool. If you see all of these face points on the face, and then you also see the pivot point of your image, um, when you use a face sticker, you'll notice that the, oops, the face sticker actually, here, I'll put this at the top so that it works a little better. Um, it will 
attach that center point to one of these points. So if you align these points perfectly, like this one right on the tip of the nose, then it will stick exactly to that point. And then if you offset it from that point, it will still stick to that point, but it will be offsetting um, itself to try to find the closest point to where you actually want it. So you'll notice if I keep it in the exact center and I drag it upward on the forehead, um, sometimes it will actually be sort of off center. And that's because it will find one of these brow points as the new closest spot. It's a little hard to see actually. But um, you might see that it's a little closer to the X than the Y on this screen. So one thing that I like to do to make sure that things line up um, really perfectly when I need them to not be on the actual face is I'll create what you see uh, in the hierarchy already. I'll create a holder. And this is what I want to attach to the point that I care about. So this would attach close as close as possible to that nose point. And then I would turn my image off so that it doesn't render. And then my actual image, this would be what I want to render. I would turn off the face sticker of this. And then I would attach it to the holder. And then the holder is attached to whichever face point we want it to attach to. And the image itself is attached to the holder. Um, so that way it works as kind of a hinge or a pivot where you can, uh, you can have an image that's all the way over here that's still attached to the chin, which can be useful in scenarios where you're trying to attach things that are not directly on the face. Like for instance, I want this A to be attached to the eyebrow and um, you might just want to be more specific. So something to consider. I hope that's helpful to understand why I created these holder um, holder objects in the canvas here. And then really, I hope that uh, explains everything that you need to know to be able to make some effects with head rotation. Of course, this is just one type of effect that uses head rotation, and there's a ton of other ideas out there, so don't get too hung up on creating some sort of question with two answers. Try to think of something new, add your own assets, um, and I can't wait to see what you make. Uh, if you have any questions, ask in the Discord, and feel free to share what you make, no matter how small uh, it is, and I can't wait to see what everyone makes. Thanks.